Hi guys, this is GKCS. Today we are going to be talking about five things that we should not do in a system design interview. Let's start. The first problem is really ironic because now in my videos I have an intro and a lot of people in their system design interviews have an introduction. It goes like this. I have a bunch of users over here, I need to have a load balancer over here, it will be talking to a session service. You see that there was a lot of time spent. This is going to be about 5 minutes of your time. A gateway in a real system is super important, it is super useful. It does separate out the system, the internal system from the external system, brings in security, brings in rate limiting, brings in a lot of good features. Do you need to explain that in every interview, system design interview you go to? No. So don't have a set introduction. That's the first point. The second point is super interesting. It just happens after the introduction is over. People start talking about how many daily active users this system is going to have. How many of them will be uploading how much data without any reason. There needs to be a purpose for which you are doing capacity planning. If you have a concern, first note that mention it to the interviewer, make it a discussion, involve them in the calculation and then go ahead and do this. Don't do capacity estimation without any reason. The third point is something that I see a lot happening with senior engineers. The weird thing is they make a system, they draw out these, these boxes, but then they don't know how exactly these boxes are communicating with each other. Okay, so one is that they don't know about the network protocol that they should use. But even if they do know about the network protocol, let's say that they say internally I'm going to be using gRPC or something similar and uh, externally maybe I'm going to be using HTTP or I'm going to be using, let's say I need to transfer video, I'm going to be using RTMP if it's a live streaming service, whatever. What exactly does that give us? What are the benefits of using it? So the network protocols and the network internals is something that people don't often know about and I definitely ask you to focus on this if you're going for a senior engineering position. Because it's not just about making a scalable system, extensible system by building these boxes. Okay, you might have really got the functionalities correct, but the way that the system communicates with each other, that this box communicates with this box, is a real cost in the real world. So you need to know the internals of these protocols as much as you need to know the internals of these databases. Which brings us to the fourth point, lack of internals knowledge. If you're going to be using a database like Cassandra or Elasticsearch, you need to have some idea of how it works internally. Taking an example is a good thing in an interview. It's much better than taking no examples at all. But if you're going to be mentioning an example, like let's say Cassandra, if you know nothing about Cassandra, if you know nothing about how it works internally, that is a red flag. It means that you used to use this system, you know what this system stands for, what it does, without having any idea of how you can generalize these learnings and then extend them to a new system which comes up tomorrow. Maybe the gossip protocol is not what you need for a system that you're building right now in your company, but everything else about Cassandra is really good. So if you know about the internals of Cassandra, you can actually replicate a lot of that to build this new system. Remember that a system design interview is not about building a working system. It's about measuring your aptitude, very similar to an algorithms interview. Yes, of course, you're going to be using your experience. Yes, of course, you're going to be trying to bring in real world considerations in a system design problem. But for a 45 minute interview, there's no way in which you are not going to be trying to generalize problems and solve them with generic solutions that you have learned from specific examples. So as much as you can, try to understand the internals of systems instead of just knowing what to use where. The fifth and final point is trade-offs. A lot of people talk about what is this system doing instead of what are the things that we are losing out on or what are the things that we could possibly do better. Trade-offs comes from having a deep knowledge of how do systems work, what are the possible cons and pros of that solution. For example, if you need to send an email notification for any payment done by this user A, then send it to the gateway and then you send it to the booking system, possibly there's going to be a payment service here. And this payment service can either fire emails to all of these users that, hey, a new payment has been made, or it can send them to a queue which subscribes to these events, these payment events. And then one of those subscribers of this queue 
is going to be taking this event and then broadcasting the emails. There's a benefit to this because you have now decoupled this system with the email firing. Okay, so this is the booking system and this is the payment system. The payment system has no idea when the email is being fired. It doesn't need to know either. You're seeing that there are some trade-offs here also. What's the cost of this message queue? What's the cost of actually firing emails in bulk? Are you going to be building a solution in-house? Are you going to be using an API, an external API, which you pay to fire emails? Or are you going to use some open source solution running on your own box, which is going to take care of this? So all of them have pros and cons. And these are some of the trade-offs that we have to think of while designing these systems. Which brings me to a bonus point, uh, which is the most critical one in a system design interview. And that is you need to stay with the problem that you're trying to solve. If you have a look at the first, first mistake that people make, it's about starting with an intro. You don't need an intro. Focus on the core of the system. The second thing, going for capacity planning. You don't need to do that unless the core of the system is going to collapse. Unless your system becomes infeasible, you don't really need to do a lot of capacity planning beforehand. This is my personal opinion. So the sixth and bonus point is actually the point of a system design interview. Stay close to the core, move outwards. And as you expand outwards, keep these things in mind while you're expanding the system. So these are six points that I'd like to highlight before you head to a system design interview. The things to remember, number one, Make sure you don't go for a fixed intro, focus on the core of the system, like we said. Point number two, don't go for capacity estimations without any purpose, without any reason. Do exchange your concerns with the interviewer before you head to something like that, because it may not be necessary. Point number three, think about networks, think about the way in which you're communicating with microservices. So network protocols are something that we should know deep. The fourth point is that we need to know the internals of databases more often than not to understand what are the possible problems and solutions that they bring in. Point number five is trade-offs. Only after you know some of the internals of these systems, will you be able to judiciously choose one approach over another. If you have any doubts or suggestions on this, do let me know in the comments below. If you are looking for more detailed videos on system design, head to interviewready.io. I'll see you next time.